uh, performance uh, up to um, up to August of 2024. So thank you very much. Thank you, and that was uh, the governor of the Central Bank of Kenya, who's also the chair of the Monetary Policy Committee, Dr. Kamau Thuge. And as usual, we take questions. Uh, just a reminder, if you want to send any questions, uh, send them through Slido, slido.com. The hashtag is hashtag MPC1024. We shall begin with uh, Charles Mwaneki from the Nation Media Group. So Charles asks, has the CBK been buying dollars from the market? given the $837 million rise in Forex reserves over the last five weeks. Kefa Moirore, also from uh, the Nation Media Group, asking, the seventh review of the IMF program remains pending. What are the remaining hurdles to clear this disbursement, and when can we expect this review to close? A uh, final one from this batch, from Herald Law from the Africa Report, asking, how confident are you that the current stable currency and U.S. rate cuts will encourage significant inflows to Kenya and solve asset problems. Let me start with uh, <clears throat> Mr. Moneki um, on the issue of the CBK um, buying dollars. <clears throat> um, as I've uh, explained uh, in the past, um, our exchange rate policy is to allow the exchange rates to uh, be determined by the forces of um, supply and uh, demand. We do intervene when we see uh, basically to moderate um, excessive uh, fluctuations in the exchange rate. And it is true that um, we've had a significant increase in um, foreign exchange, uh, both from banks, um, but also remittances. So in order to um, moderate um, the, um, the fluctuations in volatility in the exchange rate, we have indeed been um, buying uh, foreign exchange uh, and um, that is part of our of our role, and that's part of our business. And of course, um, the the same can be said when the exchange rate, when there is need to intervene on the other side, when the exchange rate starts to weaken, uh, um, then uh, we would be able to intervene even on that side. But it's intervening to uh, reduce volatility, not to affect the overall direction of the exchange rate that would uh, reflect the fundamentals of the of the economy. So, for this particular for this particular um, time, we do have um, uh, quite a significant amount of dollars coming in, uh, including also from uh, tea as well. And so, um, so yes, we have been intervening somewhat in the in the foreign exchange market to build our reserves. And we do now believe that we have we have been able to strengthen our um, external uh, buffers significantly. Um, in the past, we have been able to uh, build the international reserves of the. Um, of the central bank, uh, largely from uh, either loans from the IMF, loans from the World Bank, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, we are now building uh, reserves um, related, not related to loans, but uh, related to um, the excess uh, uh, foreign exchange that is actually coming in into the, into the economy. Uh, Kefa um, has asked a question about the seventh review <clears throat> and what are the remaining hurdles to clear uh, this disbursement. Um, so I think um, we have um, been having um, discussions with the IMF. Um, the discussions now are really to combine the seventh uh, review and the eighth uh, review. We've made a lot of uh, uh, progress, significant progress. 
we are in the final stages of, uh, of an agreement. The fiscal framework has been agreed. The fiscal deficit that I mentioned earlier of 4.3% of GDP has been agreed between the Treasury and the IMF. And so uh, we have in our projections for the <clears throat> For the reserve build-up for the um, for the year as a whole, the one I mentioned, the 1.9 um, billion dollars of accumulation uh, has assumed a disbursement from the IMF uh, before the end of uh, December. So I would say that um, discussions are progressing well, uh, and we do expect that uh, uh, disbursements will be made before the end of the of the calendar year. Mr. Alo um, has asked how confident um, we are that the current stable currency and the U.S. rate cuts will encourage significant inflows uh, to Kenya and solve asset <coughs> problems. I think um, you know, suddenly the U.S. has already uh, cut their policy rate by 50 basis points last time. Uh, we had cut ours by 25 basis points uh, last time. We are now um, we have now to um, going ahead to uh, reduce the policy rate by a further 70, uh, 75 basis points. Um, it's also expected that the U.S. Uh, is likely to make two further cuts uh, in uh, perhaps in November and also in in December. So our 75 basis points, I think, is in line with that, with the what has already happened in the U.S., uh, that the U.S. has cut by 50 basis points, and it's now expected to reduce uh, their policy rate by 25 basis points in November and uh, a further 25 basis points in, in December. Uh, I think the question... Uh, Perhaps would be whether the the, the reduction in the, in the policy rate uh, will have any impact on the on the on our exchange rate, and uh, the answer is uh, no. Um, as I've indicated, part of the strengthening of the exchange rate is actually coming from exports, uh, agricultural exports. It's also coming from uh, remittances. And there is a part that is obviously coming for the um, to invest in the securities because of uh, the high interest rates that we have. But I do believe that um, given that we have a stable exchange rate, that there is scope to reduce um, interest rates further without uh, and still um, for them to be attractive enough for foreigners to still to be able to invest in our uh, in our local security. So I don't see that this will have any negative impact on the incentives for investors to come and invest in uh, in um, in securities. All right, the second batch of questions, we begin with George Obulutsa from Reuters News. Uh, George is asking whether there's an